Hi everyone, welcome to the Earth Science Regents Review podcast series created by Hamix Middle School Earth Science Department. Today we're going to focus our attention on stars. Now stars are interesting in the sense that they are one of the most recognizable objects in the daytime and nighttime sky. During the nighttime, obviously you can see many more stars than you can do during the daytime. During the daytime, you can really only see one star, which is our own sun. Stars are going to be giant spheres of gas that produce its own energy and light. That energy and light is produced through the process of what we call fusion, which we'll get to in a second. Stars are going to be important to us because they not only fill the nighttime sky, they make up hundreds of billions of galaxies that we've been able to document with the Hubble Space Telescope. Each of those galaxies contains hundreds of billions of stars. So they're a very, very important object in our universe. Now our own sun is important to us because it gives us the necessary light and energy in order for life to exist. We are a perfect distance away from the sun where Earth is not too hot and it's not too cold. Now, like I said with fusion, fusion is going to be very important because it's going to be the process that creates the energy from each one of our stars. We can identify the energy that's given off by a star simply by looking at its luminosity or its brightness. And if, so basically it starts off with hydrogen. Hydrogen is considered the fuel of all stars or hydrogen is considered the fuel of our own sun. When you talk about hydrogen, it's going to fuse together. Two hydrogen atoms come together and fuse. They bond together to create helium and energy. So that helium and energy is given off. You can detect it through the brightness or the luminosity of our stars. So you can see here that you get two hydrogen atoms coming together, a tremendous amount of energy is created, and also a little bit of helium. Now, life cycle of stars determined basically by what we consider mass and size of the star. Stars go through the same life cycle as a human, young age, middle age, and old age. So depending upon how much mass it has, and the sheer size of it is going to determine what type of life cycle you're going to have. Now, our sun is considered an average star. It kind of falls right in the middle of all stars that have been documented. Kind of, it's got a, an average size, an average mass, an average brightness, and eventually our sun will turn into what's called a red giant. Now, that's not going to happen for another five billion years. The sun has enough energy to last for another five billion years. So, when the sun does turn into a red giant, the four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, will be swallowed up by that red giant. So you can see here, all stars start out as a stellar nebula, and depending on its mass, it's going to either take the upper path or the lower path. Our sun is going to turn into an average star, which it is now. It's going to turn into a red giant, then a planetary nebula, then a white dwarf. The much larger stars, the more massive stars, turn into a red supergiant, then they explode to a supernova, and then they can either turn into a neutron star or a black hole. Now, our stars can be classified or organized by a number of different topics. Now, classification just means that, that something is going to be organized by common characteristics. And the common characteristics include how bright a star is going to be, that's luminosity, its color, and its temperature. Now, those characteristics are going to be found on page 15 in the reference table, the characteristics of stars chart. Along the left-hand side, you have luminosity, how bright the star is going to be. Along the bottom, you have temperature, and you have color. You'll notice that the color red is cooler than the color blue. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to be able to find what category of star you're looking for, giant, supergiant, main sequence, or white dwarf, and try to answer the questions that are being asked of you. Now, make sure you check out my podcast on this specific chart because I get into a lot more detail. But the one star I'm going to point out to you right now is just the sun. The sun's kind of right there in the middle, just kind of got highlighted right there. It's an average temperature, average color, and average luminosity. You can also find a little information on our sun on the bottom of page 15, the solar system data chart. And you'll see that you can find information about the period of rotation, the equatorial diameter, the mass, and the density of the sun. So that's it for now. Make sure you check back soon. We'll talk to you.